Hello everybody. It's been a while since we made our last video. And uh, something interesting happened in the meanwhile that is Open CFT which is the made uh, company which made Open Form was bought over by another company named SGI. And there was a period of uncertainty that we didn't know what is going to be the future of Open Form. But nothing to worry now. Uh, SGI has established Open Form Foundation and they're going to continue it as an open source software. Okay, now turning to today's topic. Uh, which we are going to look at the block mesh date. Um, it was it will be the continuation of the previous uh, case which we saw in the first uh, tutorial. That is the cavity flow. Uh, if you remember, there was a, there was a lid moving on the top, and that is the flow inside this cavity. So we are going to see how the block uh, the mesh is uh, made for this case. And so we first start with the block mesh dictionary. Uh, just to give a quick idea about where this file was so we saw the zero folder constant and the system and inside the zero folder we have the boundary conditions but we are supposed to go into the constant <laughs> folder sorry for that mistake <laughs> uh, but okay we are inside the constant after after two years of learning upper from there you don't know to remember this <laughs> <laughs> you keep joking around man i, I can't concentrate <laughs> all right so uh inside the constant folder we go to polymesh and then the block mesh dictionary. I already have it open here. So in the uh, all the thing on the top is just the headers. Forget it. The main part path starts from here. So what we have is convert to meters uh, 0 0.1. Well, if you if you add convert to meters as one, it means whatever you mention here, it will be in meters. So if you put 0 0.1, that means whatever you're going to type here is in centimeters. I would like to stress that uh, the units specified here are the units only for the mesh and they are not the units you actually used in the solver. Having said that, let's move on to the next uh, section which is the specifying the vertices. What you see here is uh, we have specified coordinates of 8 corners of the hexagon. And what is the hexagon? Uh, if you look at the manual, okay, these are the this is the um, thing which we are model which we have modeled here so if you see th the zero zero the origin is right here and we have this uh, first direction second direction and the third direction and uh, we have specified totally eight points uh, exactly as shown in the uh, described in the picture and accordingly we have made a hexagon okay let's let's look at it closer what well, uh, is the sequence of numbers here important? Yes, definitely. They are very important. What uh, should they mean? Okay, if you look, the first and the second number should represent the first direction. That is the 0 and 1. That is, there is one increment in the x direction. So, that, uh, that uh, shows the increase in x. So, it describes the x. And the second and the third represents the second direction one and two here in this case and what is uh, more important is the first and the fifth in this case this point and this point describe the third direction so this is very important and uh, so this is how we define the hexagon now to play around a little bit further what we can do is we can swap number the point number seven and put it above the point number zero now what actually happens is that now then the reference numbers will change now we will have we will have zero on top and uh, this point would become number six so wait number seven okay so now let's comment this out and let's create a new hexagon so if you have to create a new hexagon uh, what what point would you choose as your first point? Um, I would say the reference point remains as this origin point we specified, which is a zero 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 point. So where is the zero zero point now? It's here. And what is the number of this point right now in the new numbering system? It is number one. Okay, so I put number one. And what should be my second point? My second point should have uh, one increment in the x direction. So if this is zero zero zero. And the next point would be this one, which in the new num new reference system is number two. So likewise, 
likewise i go on for the next point as well uh, my next point should have an the third point should have an increment uh, should do should help me define this direction so if i look at it this coordinate is what it's it's one in the x and one in the y it is this one so now the new number is for that is three so i put three and likewise i can also work this out four and now what we have to con be conscious is it is important that the first and the fifth uh, digit should um, help me define the third direction so now this is where you come into picture so you have to take the first was your was your this point zero zero point and difference between that and the next should have uh, a unit difference in or some difference only in the z direction on the third coordinate so i will choose this point which in my numbering system is number five so i put the five and yeah okay i can i put the next two point six and seven and finally my last point is in the new numbering system is the zero uh, which is on top actually so uh, actually it could be even uh, yeah zero seven six whatsoever so all of these are in uh, defining the, the in the same plane, plane. yeah, yeah same exactly plane. so they th these are in the same plane yeah so to repeat once again what is important first and second should define the first direction second and third should define the second direction and the first and the fifth should define the third direction and that's very important and once that is done here we can do uh, <coughs> here we can do let's say now we have defined as one centimeter as the total length in the x direction so what it means is that that one centimeter we are discretizing into 10 10 cells in the x and the 10 units in the y direction and we will be having only one cell in the z direction or uh, perhaps we can take a look at it if i type in order to do this i do a block mesh Okay, my block mesh is done. Then I go to paraform. Okay. Uh, we have it here is that okay? We have these ten cells. Now, if you can observe here, the cells here are closely spaced, and the cell at the end is the is widely spaced. Why? How it is done? Is it is done using the simple grading system? where we say um, that in x direction we have specified a simple grading of 2 what does this simple grading of 2 mean if you look at the manual uh, if you scroll down you will see come up to this point where the gradient is specified by this as a ratio between the last cell to the first cell that is this delta e is the de uh, is the cell uh, cell size of the last cell and uh, delta s is the is the first cell so if the if the ratio of this is 2 that means the cell at the end will be twice as big as the first one so if I want to do it the other way around if I want to have the first cell twice as big as the last cell I will put 0 0.5 here I put 0 0.5 and I'm going to do a block mesh once again Okay, the block mesh is done. I close the previous para view and uh, I open a new one. Okay. All right. So if if we take a look at it, yeah. So now we have it uh, the other way around. At the end, it is. So just to uh, give an overview of what we saw, first we specified the units, then we created the vertices, and based on the vertices, we sp uh, we created a hexagon. And then we discretize the hexagon into number of cells as many as we want, and we specified some gradient. So we so far so good, and uh, now we will go on to create the patches, and Shoaib will tell us how it is done. Thank you, my friend. Okay, so the vertices have been uh, already defined here. Uh, these vertices, by default in open form, they are connected by the straight lines. And these options are given under this option edge edges. The
the other options available other than a straight line could be arcs for example if you want to use you make want to make a circle then arc option can be given splines or uh, polylines can be given these options and syntax for these could be could be uh, easily looked in the user manual okay <coughs> Uh, next come the option of patches or uh, patches could be taken as a as the bounding faces of your whole geometry for example in, in this case here yeah uh, here could be uh, the different patches could be for example this this top one could be one patch and this this front one the back one these sides two sides and bottoms this could be the the various patches of of our geometry okay for defining the patch three things are required actually one is the required keyword which this this first one the other is the the user defined name for that pa that patch and the third would be that which of the face is to be defined as as uh, that particular patch okay this is uh, for example let me focus on this first one uh, as we know in from our previous example the top wall uh, the top wall this one is to be taken as a moving wall okay so from uh, if we go back to our case uh, we know that four five six seven this one is is the top wall so here we put this four five six seven so this means that we have selected the the top wall to be to be defined under this patch okay now the sequence of this four five six seven is also important so it cannot be like something five six seven four or something it it, it has to follow some rule okay in a complex wording and uh, the rule is that if you sit inside the inside the hexagon then the, the, the normal of that particular face should point in the outward direction so I'll be sitting inside the cube. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. You <laughs> have to imagine like that. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The the simple thing is uh, that you can also use your right hand rule if you know it, and perhaps you should know it. <laughs> I, I guess so. Uh. <laughs> okay. So just put use your right hand rule on that particular face, and your thumb should be pointing out in the outward direction, and then the curl of your of your uh, right hand would give the direction. Uh, okay, so in this way you can use that use this uh, numbering sequence. Uh, now I come to the important thing, which is the keyword for this patch. Uh, keyword for the patches. Okay, one of the most generic and commonly used uh, mm, keyword is patch itself. Uh, the other the others uh, are, for example, a wall. This wall could be is specifically used uh, where you need some uh, uh, wall. Wall models for uh, the t uh, for the turbulence modeling, and uh, yeah, it's specifically used for that purpose. But it can be used for such a simple case also. Uh, and this another keyword empty. This means that um, we do not want to. Uh, okay, these these two two faces are defining the front front and back. That is uh, this one and this back side. So these two faces are in the x direction. Uh, sorry, in the z direction. So it means uh, if we if we give empty keyword, then it means that it would not calculate anything in the z direction. So our problem is no more three D. It's it's two D. I would also like to comment that in in block mesh you cannot uh, create a two D mesh. So you have to create a three D mesh, and then at the end by by using this empty keyword for patches, you can um, you can force your open form not to calculate in the third direction. Uh, okay. So, yeah, uh, and these these names are also important because the same same names which we have defined here are exactly to be used in s the other files where you define the boundary conditions for the for these things, and uh, that we would discuss in the next tutorial. Yeah, perhaps. I think we'll make it one. So in this tutorial, I guess you get more or less the complete idea for this block mesh dict. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, you you didn't mention about the symmetry boundary condition. I guess it's uh, ah yeah yeah. Uh, uh, symmetry plane yeah there is another keyword symmetry plane which can be used to to use the uh, symmetry yeah if if you do not want to model the complete picture use the symmetry option yes yeah. exactly yeah though we did this specific for cavity case yeah the next one we can show yeah okay so thank you
Bye-bye. Bye.